Hello, y'all. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I just wanted to talk about like just stepping out on faith, like just just going for it, just jumping. You know, I don't know if you guys seen that Will Smith video of him like jumping out of a plane, and so um, basically. Uh, <laughs> A lot of times, and this is, this is for anybody who wants to listen, but it's also um, more so geared towards the church. Um, Just because a lot of times, you know, we always talk about the, the, our glorious moments in the faith, but we never talk about, or we rarely talk about when we mess up and thank God nowadays people are starting to kind of be more transparent with all of their experience with God like all of your experience with God is not always a triumphant moment you know what I'm saying there are times where you are confused and so if you're very religious and churchy you're like well God's not an author of confusion so that must not be God and it's just like just just back just chill out all right (laughs) just chill out so Um, I like to use this example because it's it's a great example. And I know some people might might be tired of me talking about it, but I don't care. (laughs) Um, I want to talk about when I decided to leave my church back in 2016. Um, Growing up in church, I always thought that when you made a a big decision in your life or just period, when when you make decisions, you know, you always go to God about it first. You know, there's like there's like a step by step process go to God about it pray about it wait on it that was, that was that was always the process did you go to God about it did you pray about it? like and even I can get caught up in that too sometimes like you know what I'm saying and and I'm not saying that that's not good advice that's I think that's, I think that's great advice but there are times in your life where it's not always going to be like that it's just it's just not you know what I'm saying um so anyways um I remember when, um, like I said, I decided to leave my church and I'm telling you, like, that was probably one of the hardest decisions, one of the hardest decisions in my life, because, you know, I really, I really was being groomed to believe that everything that being there was going to kind of take me where I needed to go, you know, and I was raised to believe that. You find a home church and you pretty much, you stick, you, you stay, you know, unless, you know, you move and, you, you know, you have no choice but to like leave. But you find a home church and you stay, you know. But of course, God, God got a hold of me and changed, wrecked all of that, you know, uh, you know, education up, you know. But anyways, um, I knew that I didn't want to be there anymore. And I knew that I didn't feel safe anymore. I didn't feel safe there anymore. You know, um, the people that I had the most encounters with and were, were people in leadership and people who, you know, I felt like I should feel safe with, but I didn't. I didn't feel safe anymore. I didn't feel safe. It wasn't a place for me. I didn't feel safe. So... Um, so I was trying to, I was just planning on leaving because, I, because it, it got to the point where it just, it just got, it just got too unbearable to be there. I, I didn't have the best relationships anymore with the, with the people that I knew for so long. And it just got really unbearable. Like it, it, it was just, it got really hard to be there. You know what I'm saying? And, um, my, my boyfriend at the time had preached a sermon. And it's funny because he had changed, like he told me the sermon that he's going to preach originally, but he changed his sermon. And I, and, and to this day, I don't understand why I kind of have, a, I kind of have an inkling of why he might have, but I don't know. But either way, you know, he changed his sermon and his sermon ended up saying at the end, you need to stay, you need to stay here at this particular location. 
at this church. And it's funny because a lot of times when you are a part of a church that when you have when you are a part of a church that has whether they know it or whether they don't know it when you have when you have become a part of a church that has adopted cultish ways you'll start to hear a lot from a lot of the preachers that that will that will grace the stage they'll tell you oh you need to stay here this is the place where you need to be like you'll keep he- like I, and, and I'm not saying this because I'm by, by because of the bad experience that I had like I've talked to other people who've gone through the same thing that I've gone through and we had the same experience where they were at this church and not that's not saying that God wasn't moving okay or God wasn't present there look the gift is given without repentance so even though you may be in a messy church gifts can still flow and still operate because God gives gifts without repentance so that's why you can't be swayed because a church is is highly gifted or they're there they prophesy all the time just because people prophesy all the time first of all it doesn't mean it's coming from God <laughs> okay this is why you need to know God's voice secondly uh, it doesn't mean that that's the place you need to be at because they're always speaking prophetically okay remember remember the gift is given without repentance all right and um, so anyways you know um, so a lot of times when you have churches that have adopted cultish ways um, and they don't and sometimes they don't even know it some some and a lot of churches a lot of churches nowadays have adopted cultish ways and people think that a cult is you know uh, how it looked or how it's done is you know back in the 70s when you know they was drinking the Kool-Aid and no no like let me tell you something. The enemy is very slick. He's very cunning. And, he, you know, he, he knows how to deceive God's children. He does. And things can be done slick like, and it can look, you know, holy, but it ain't. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, just, 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 that's why it's so important to know God for yourself. You know, that's why it's so important and I would encourage you, ask God for a discernment. He will give it to you. That way you can kind of, you know, you because know, I'll be honest, there were a lot of things that was going on that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit was letting me know, like, this is not me. This is not right. And basically the Holy Spirit was kind of prompting me for me to for me to leave. You know what I'm saying? Like months before I even decided to leave, the Holy Spirit was prompting me to leave. And I And I look back and I can see, oh, okay, God you were prompting me like you were trying to like you were warning me or whatever um but it, it, but either way um either way I'll stay on topic um so I, I didn't feel comfortable didn't I didn't I started to feel uncomfortable there I started to feel unsafe there and so you know a few days before I decided to leave you know I I asked a couple of people for advice you know people that I really respected their opinion and people who I just you know they've been in the game for a long time so I just you know I didn't know any better you know and once again we live in a a church we live in a we have created this church culture that makes people afraid of leaving their church you you know what I'm saying and so and, and what they do is they call them church hoppers and then they demonize these people and it's like you do you do have some people that do wander and they may not have a sense of direction or guidance. You do have those people. But every person that decides to not necessarily have a church membership doesn't mean that they're not being guided by the Lord. It doesn't mean that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so a lot of times in church, we like to... Uh, uh, go left with something like we'll go all the way left and it's like because we we talk about it then that means oh then that's what it is are you going from this church oh you a church hopper and it's like first of all 
you don't know what God has for me. You don't know my purpose. You don't know my, we don't know my walk. You don't, you don't know what God has for me. So don't assume because what I'm doing looks like what's being described to you in church. And they're ignorant of how it, of what it means to truly walk with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, when you're, when you walk with the Lord, you really have to get to a point in your, in your life where you really don't care what people say, <laughs> because if you do, it will get your focus off of the, off of the source. You have to keep your eyes focused on him. So anyways, um, but in, you know, so I, I, I felt uncomfortable and, um, I, I got advice and, um, I ended up leaving, you know, I, I it got to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was like, you know, what? I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to, I'm going to leave. I can't do it no more. I got, I got to get out of here. You know, I just, I felt like I got to get out of here. I'm going to go crazy. So I left. And it's funny. Cause like I I felt, I instantly felt peace. So I guess there's that peace or whatever that people talk about. But people don't talk about the other emotions that you go through. I didn't, it, that whole experience for me didn't feel peaceful. Like it wasn't like, oh, I, no, like there were, there, but the, 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 the moments leading up to me leaving, I did not feel peaceful. I felt afraid. I felt confused. I felt like, you know, what if I leave, you know, my purpose is just going to be jacked up or, you know, I mean, I had a lot of emotions that I was going through. And then even after I left, that feeling of peace, it only lasted very shortly because I ended up talking to my boyfriend at the time. And I remember he was like, because I told him, I said, I said, I feel free. I feel, you know, I feel at peace, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, that's a false sense of freedom. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, back then I was so like, I didn't know my word, I didn't, you know, and I really relied heavily on leadership and people. And thank God I'm not like that anymore, you know, but I felt, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm making a huge mistake, you know, <laughs> like I felt like, dad, like I'm a heathen, you know, <laughs> I'm just lost. And I, and I, but, but I felt, but I felt confused right after that. You know, I felt confused and I was like, oh my gosh, God, am I making the right decision? And so I, I, I felt all those emotions, you know what I'm saying? But once again, you know, the, the, the thing that kept me uh, on that same decision, you know, I, you know, hey, I made the decision, I'm going to keep moving forward, was I don't feel safe there anymore. Now, of course... You know, I had some back and forth feelings. I had some back and forth, you know, actions. And I even tried to go back. And it's so good because, like, I, I prayed to God. I said, God, if this is what I'm supposed to do, you got you to gotta be with me every step of the way. You have to, you know, confirm this for me because, you know, I'm out here looking crazy to these people. You know what I'm saying? They already, you know, feel like I got anger problems. And they already feel like I got issues and you know, I already feel like the black sheep and me leaving just completely, you know, completely solidifies everything that they think about me. So you got to, you know, confirm if this is right, you know, because if it's not now go back, you know, and I tried to go back and I, and, and I wasn't permitted to go back at that particular time when I tried to go back. And so that right there was, you know, I just, I kept getting confirmation after confirmation um, as time progressed. And it wasn't confirmation every day. You know, I had to wait. <laughs> I had to wait, at, you know, and, 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 and during that time period, I sought the Lord. I was seeking him because I was like, I need answers. I wasn't getting answers where I was. I need answers, you know. And I, and, I, and I was in my word heavy, heavily. And I really do believe that the Holy Spirit really helped me during that time period and gave me just this hunger and just this thirst, thirst, <laughs> this hunger to, um, to just seek him, you know. And so, um, 
it, it was it was it was it was amazing. It was probably one of the most greatest but terrible times of my life because I was learning so much and I was, you know, hearing God's voice and so many things were happening great for me, but it was scary cuz I was by myself and I was used to God <clears throat> I was used to God you know I was used to God um and doing church a particular way and God was completely wrecking completely wrecking that whole mentality he just was wrecking that like oh, okay taking that out taking this out take you know and so um yeah so so I say that to say that you know sometimes when you want to do something in your life sometimes you're not gonna know you know and it it reminds me of two particular times in the Bible that I can remember Abraham when God called him away from his family the Bible says that Abraham didn't know where he was going he didn't know where he was going, but yet he was still being guided by the Holy Spirit. He was still being guided by the Lord, you know, and there's another time. Uh, I don't remember her name. So this is probably not a good example because I, I don't I don't remember the name. But um, there was a story in the Bible where. Um, I, huh, you know, what? I'm not even going to say it because I, I can't even think of the name right now, but. In a nutshell, uh, the woman who was in the king's palace, um, one of the king's right-hand man wanted to kill her uncle. And so she just, out of the blue, decided to make a call for the Jews to go on a fast. She didn't hear from God. God didn't tell her to go on a fast. She just said, hey, we're going to go on a fast and hopefully, you know, this will work. And so there are a lot of times in your life where you're not you may not hear that voice or you may not know if it's God. You may not know if it's God. And honestly, all you have is faith. And I think a lot of times what we can do in the church is we can scare people because we want people to um, follow this, this perfect plan. But, but God's perfect plan isn't always this, this, this perfectly crafted, everything works out. God's plan is like some bumps and, you know, some days where you're waiting and sometimes where you, you know, you, you may go down the wrong path or, and then he brings you back. And, you know, and a lot of times we discourage people in truly learning the father for themselves because they may go off on the wrong path. But, you know, God always reassures us in his word that he will keep us on the right path. Those who seek him. You know what I'm saying? So, and even, and even people who may not seek him, he's like keeping them, he's holding them. And, and you know, God is, I mean, we, we underestimate how great our God is. We really do. And I think the best thing that we can do for each other in the body is to pray for each other. Pray. You know, that's not to say don't try to warn people or help people. But sometimes, like, and I just think about um, Peter. Peter had the best intentions for Jesus. When Jesus said, I must go and suffer. Peter had the best intentions. He was like, no, not so, Lord. No, you don't know. You're not going to, we're not, I'm not going to have that. And so many of us, we have the best intentions for people. And we want people to do things a certain way. But sometimes you just got to let people live their life and hope that the Father will keep them. 
You know what I'm saying? And and pray for them. And some and and we have created in this and and not 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 all churches are like this. Cause I've 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 been in some great churches since then. But you know, um, a lot of the church culture foundationally, and I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit's foundation, I'm talking about man's foundation. Foundationally, we have created this, this, this fear of fear. We have made people afraid. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we should not be walking by fear, but walking by faith. And I'm not saying that you'll never be afraid or you'll never experience fear. It happens. So I'm not just I'm not discouraging you from from experiencing human emotion. But what I'm talking about is leadership or just church or, you know, oh, you didn't go to church today. Oh, you didn't go. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. you know, and it's like you got all of these rules and you have and you have you just have all, like it's like nonsense, y'all like. Let people learn what it means to walk with God. And sometimes walking with God is unorthodox. It is. I'm a living witness. It's unorthodox what God is doing with me. And, and I'll be honest, there are times where I question it and I'm like, okay, God, what is this? <laughs> And then God will send me somebody to confirm that you're on the right path or he'll, or, or he'll give me a vision or I'll have deja vu, you know, or just stuff like that. Like, like, you know, God confirms, you know, that, hey, I got you. And sometimes the only thing that I have is 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 God's uh, voice, you know, reminding me that I will keep my promise that I made to you about your life. I will keep my promise. And that's all I got. That's all I got. And I and and for God and for what he has for my life on this earth, I will look like a fool to people. I will. And that's fine. You know, you guys can't you guys can't you don't have a heaven or hell to put me in. <laughs> you didn't form me in my mama's womb. You know what I'm saying? You didn't make the sun. You didn't you didn't make the universe. Come on, like do do we do we know who our God is? He made the earth, the moon, the stars. He knows all of them by name. Like he knows how many hairs is on my head. So I really think that he is fully capable of keeping a promise to me. And not just to me, but to everybody out there who he's made a promise to. And so this video pretty much is just stepping about stepping out on faith. Ju just jump, just jump. You know, we have a lot of how to's in church and all these these books and 10 steps and three steps and all this stuff. And it's and some of it is very helpful. I'm not saying that it's not. But sometimes you got to throw the book out of the out of the car, throw it out of the window and just step out on faith and just trust God. Trust God for your life. That's all you got sometimes. Sometimes you don't have peace. I'm going to say it. Yep. Sometimes you don't have it. Sometimes you don't always know. Sometimes it ain't about fasting. Sometimes you didn't go to God first. <laughs> That's going to rock somebody's uh, world. And I, when, I, when, I, when I say go to God first, I mean in the sense of, okay, I'm going to get in my closet. I'm going to pray about this. Sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes, you know what? I just, I just took, a, took, a, took a leap of faith. Didn't think about it. Didn't pray about it. I just took a leap of faith. Sometimes you have moments like that in your life. And it's okay to have those moments. You need to stop trying to figure out God and, and his ways. It, it, it's it's just it's it's un it's un it's it's unattainable. I'm I'm sorry to 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 uh, to uh, disappoint you if you try to figure out God's ways. I, I mean the the Bible tells us this. 
you know. So, and not only that, church, mature. It's time, it's time for us to mature. I want to also encourage you too. Everything that you have, people who have been raised in the church, especially in the westernized church, everything that you have been raised on, I dare you to challenge it. And people don't like that word challenge because they think it's, 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 it's obstinacy, it's disobedience. But no, challenge it, meaning test it, is this Bible. <clears throat> test it. I'm doing it right now. And let me tell you something. It's been one heck of a ride. And it's been amazing. And it's been the most rewarding. Because it's like, Wow. I am getting to know personally who my God is. And it's a beautiful experience. It, it, it ain't always, you know, easy peasy. But it's a beautiful experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade this walk, this experience for the world. I wouldn't trade, trade, trade it. Because I'm getting to know God's heart. I'm getting, I get the privilege of getting to know his heart. You know what I'm saying? In this journey of ups and downs and this ways and that, you know, I, and waiting and trusting and sometimes being anxious and sometimes having peace and, you know, I'm learning my creator. And I'm learning what it, I'm learning most importantly, that he keeps his promises. He keeps his word. When he says that I will keep you, he means it. And when he says that, when he speaks a word over your life, especially with Abraham, Abraham, when he started his journey with, with God, Abraham, you know, went off and did his own thing sometimes. But God kept him. God kept him on the right path. And I'll leave you with this. I remember um, months ago, I was, um, I was um, just driving and God spoke to me very clearly and just very just matter of just, just like whatever. He was just like, Nina, if you get off track, I'll put you back on track. It was so simple. Like, it, like there wasn't like a, a, a formula. There wasn't like pie and all that. Geometry. It, 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 it was just very simple. If you get off track, Nina, I'll put you back on track. And so with this walk, what I've done is I've taken the words that God has uh, spoken to me throughout. It'll be two years in December. Throughout these two years, almost two years, I, I just look back at, I remember the words that he sp speaks to me. And that's what keeps me moving forward. That's what keeps me putting one foot in front of the other. And if you are at a point in your life where you need to jump, where you feel like you need to step out on faith, do it. What's the worst that you can happen? Fall on your face? All right, cool. God is with you. He's with you in the valley. He's with you on the mountaintop. He's with you. Hey, you make mistakes. It happens. I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made. You make mistakes. It happens. Get back up and just continue living your life. All right, this didn't work out. Cool. All right. God's with me. He's not mad at me. That's another thing, too, people, people need to understand. Like, he's not mad at you. You know, we get afraid to make mistakes and we think, oh, God's mad at me. God. Oh, my gosh. No, like, I, and I was, I, I was living like that last year. I was like, oh, my God, like, God, God. Because I was just anxious. Like, okay, God, like. I don't want to mess up because when you have been groomed a certain way and, and raised in church a certain way, there's this pressure to perform and there's this pressure to hold it down. There's this pressure to, you know, make sure you follow these steps. If, oh, you didn't follow these steps. Oh, that's why. And you feel hopeless when you make a mistake. And what I've learned is with with my father is that what I made I can't tell you how many times when I made mistakes he was there 
and he picked me up and he was and he held me close and I mean I not not literally you guys but you get what I'm saying like he picked me up and he helped me he's a helper that's his nature it's not his nature to leave his kids just just hang out dry it's not his nature to do that I can't tell you how many times I thought that God was going to forsake me and he didn't instead he came to, he he helped me and he comforted me and I'm so grateful because when I compare my God to people when I used to mess up in the past people would be like hmm, there you go there she there go Nina again there she goes again being Nina See, that's why you're hard-headed. You're diso- you know, you're disobedient. God never, like he, it was never a, a situation where he threw my mistakes in my face. You know what he did? He extended grace. He said, okay, peace. Okay, grace. Okay, love. And that's why I go hard for him. Because in the moments when I messed up, he extended something that I didn't get from people. And I expected him to treat me like people, but he didn't. And he gave me grace and he gave me love and he gave me peace. And I was like, what? I just messed up. And here you are picking me up, helping me. He's my helper. He's my helper. When Jesus said, I'll send you a comforter, he meant it. This is why you have to test those thoughts in your mind that try to beat you up when you mess up because there's nothing but the enemy. The enemy comes to accuse you and to make you feel more more worse than what you, you felt. God comes to restore you and to build you back up. So if, if it's not building you back up if it's not restoring you it ain't God and you need to throw that 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 thought out of out of, in the trash and you need to send it right back to where it where it came from you need to rebuke it and that's how I've I've been able to do this walk because I've learned my father I've learned and I've learned who he is I've learned who he is so when those thoughts come what keeps me is I'm accepted and I'm loved by God. I'm accepted and I'm loved by God. I may not know where I'm going. I may not know what I'm doing. I may not know what tomorrow brings. I may not know what three months from now, you know, three months from now brings, but I'm accepted and I'm loved by God. And those words, you guys, have kept me this whole time. It's kept my mind sane, kept my heart just, you know, flourishing. I'm accepted. And I am loved by God. Those, that word, those words. It's very important. That's why it's so important that you know who you are. All you need to know about yourself for the rest of your life, if you don't know anything else, but God will continue unfolding who you are to you as time progresses. But the first thing you need to know is I'm accepted and I'm loved by God. That will get you through so many trials, so many things in your life. You are accepted. You know what acceptance does for people? And this is what we need to be talking about to each other. We need to be building each other up. You know? And and I'm not excluded. You know, I need help in this area too. Because once again, I'm unlearning a lot of how I was raised on. I'm unlearning a lot. You know, you, when, you, when you compare 20 plus years of being raised in church to, two, to less than two years, it'll be two years in December, of me walking with God. So I got 20 years of church grooming, combating walking with God so it's a struggle 
You know what I'm saying? It's a struggle, bruh. It really is. And it's okay. That, that's okay. You know? God will be with you. Even in that. So, I hope that that helps somebody, you know. My, 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 my mission on this earth is to help people know who God is. That's, that's just that. That's my mission. So if I can somehow help you to know God and his nature and who he is and just how wonderful he is, that's what I'm here to do, you know. And, um, yeah, man, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I love you guys, and um, I'm about to go to sleep. All right. (laughs)